hi everybody. It is December 15, 2018. I'm going to play a few minutes of Jason Janow. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name, Jason, but he has posted a very important video, Little Blue Light Invisible to Naked Eye. Eye pain, headaches, insomnia may be linked. Watch this. To uh, really put this out, please. I'm having to think, uh, I think this is having an effect on all the headaches and eye problems and stuff we're having. Um, I showed this before, this little light flashing while we're sitting here watching our YouTube videos, watching things, staring at our Facebook, playing games. This little light is flashing in our face. And, you know, all the stuff going on. Our phones are listening and watching all the time. I went and took on my phone, and I put a piece of tape over it. Now, the problem with that is, is that you can't see it because of this, but right on this side of that flashing light is another sensor. Now, that sensor is what, when you put to your head, it shuts the light off on your phone so it doesn't get hot is what that sensor does on this side of that blue light you can see there, let me see if I can get it to show up really good, so you can see it right there that little pink thing right next to it and then your camera but so like I'm saying I've had mine taped I did, it's been like that for a couple of days. I haven't even used my phone or made a phone call or nothing. So yesterday, I go and make a phone call, and I try to dial, and because the tape's on there, the screen goes like this. So I have to pull the, the tape off, the screen will pop on, and then I can dial and talk on the phone. Well, I took the piece of tape off in my truck, and when I got home, I had left it in my truck, so I just kind of forgot about it. I started watching YouTube for probably a good half hour to an hour probably, maybe a little bit longer. I noticed my eyes are really starting to burn. But then it dawned on me, this little light flashing has to be doing something to us, whether it's helping us, hurting our eyes more, whether it's, do, it's doing something. So... My eyes started hurting really bad yesterday, right? So I go and I get the tape. I used some of this blue masking tape. And I'll show you what happened right after that, which I figured it might. You can still see it through the tape. All right. So, I used some metal tape, and I put over mine that's recording this right now, and 20 minutes, a half hour in, my eyes stopped hurting. This is something serious, and I think we really need to look into this because, and I know it sounds far-fetched, but if you watch a lot of the movies they got, Men in Black, the flashing light resets our memory. Um, Incredibles 2 in the beginning when he resets the kid's memory. He makes him look at the light. and He's got the light flashing in his eye when he does it. This just what this reminds me of. It looks like it's hypnotizing or hurting our eyes anyway. So if I were you guys, I'd start looking into this. This is our cell phones. The funny thing about this is that if this was an iPhone right here, you would still see that light. But if the phone I was recording with was an iPhone, iPhones don't show that. That will not show up on an iPhone. See that? Now you try to put your password in. I'll let it go back out. But you'll need two phones. See, you can see the sensor next to it now really good. 
One's just a flashing light that we cannot see, probably because it's painful for our eyes. So I'm going to get off there and stop flashing that light. Okay, so uh, I will link below to Jason's video. Thank you for posting this, Jason. If you think that this is not significant or serious, well, I guess you're just one of those who may be suicidal and you're just uh, not really conscious of it. What is this? This is Directed Energy Weapons Promise and Prospects. Okay, so... Directed Energy Weapons Promise and Prospects, the Table of Contents, Radio Frequency Weapons and Electromagnetic Effects. Why am I including this? Because this here is a weapon. It is a weapon. Your iPhones, your smartphones, they are weapons. And, you know, when I first watched this video of Jason's, I don't, I only have a flip top phone. I can't access the internet. I am really surprised at how many people use their phone for everything now and use their phones to watch videos. I, there's not anyone that I can think of that I see around here that is not staring at their phone when I see them. They're, and their phone is like eight inches away from their face. The frequencies that are emitted from these phones are extremely dangerous and they can be used to emit frequencies to particular individuals to change their behavior. Okay, uh, this article was many years ago, 2000 and oh, a decade ago, 2008. Mind Control by Cell Phone on Scientific American. All our thoughts, sensations, and actions arise from bioelectricity generated by neurons transmitted through complex neural, neural circuits inside our skull. Electrical signals between neurons generate electric fields that radiate out of brain tissue as electrical waves that can be picked up by electrodes touch, touching a person's scalp. Brain wave changes with a healthy person's conscious and unconscious mental activity and state of arousal. Scientists can do more with brain waves than just listen in on brain at work they can selectively control brain function by transcranial magnetic stimulation. This technique uses powerful pulses of electromagnetic radiation beamed into a person's brain to jam or excite particular brain circuits. And I will tell you, this is a transcranial electromagnetic stimulation for your brain. They, cell phones, uh, cell towers, Gwen towers, all these electronic gadgets, smart meters, Wi-Fi, are pulsating, pulsating, powerful electromagnetic radiation. But your cell phone, okay, the effects, the effects of uh, the radiation coming from a cell tower or a smart meter or Wi-Fi, the effects on individuals, they're non-uniform. Many factors are, you have to think of the many factors in one's own individual makeup. 
Every individual experiences the pulsating frequencies differently. And how you will experience it will depend on how much water content you have in your bones, um, your size, your fat content. This is called the SAR, the S-A-R, your specific absorption rate. So when you think about how many people are called hypochondriacs and crazy, these frequencies aren't doing anything, it's in your mind, you've got some, you're paranoid, it's psychosomatic. Just because one individual is not experiencing symptoms and the it doesn't that doesn't translate to all individuals. We've got to get out of this low level of consciousness where we think our experience is everybody's experience. So if a person has a different fat content, a different uh, water content in their bones, um, they're of a different physical size, they could experience symptoms when another person who has different characteristics will not. But the cell phone, that is where the effects become uniform. You have a gadget that you're putting up to your head, your ear. And the frequency emitted from your phone has a discrete targeting due to the stationary position, positioning of that phone against your head, which will create hot spots in your brain. And, you know, the hot spots will get, well, let's say hotter with repeated exposure to the pulsating frequencies coming from your phone into your brain. And the cumulative effect is very real. And over time, it will damage your brain. The chronic exposure leads to significant changes in your brain, to your nervous system. Evidence that the effect on the central nervous system, the, the, it, it's a stress response. Your body is having a stress response when these frequencies pulsate at your body. Chronic exposure leads to your body in chronic stress, which will lead to a breakdown of your body systems, your nervous system, your central nervous system, your um, everything, your immune system. But when the nervous system or the brain is disturbed by these frequencies, morphological, electrophysiological, chemical changes take place. And those changes will inevitably result in behavioral changes. Don't think that those who are manufacturing these phones don't know that your cell phone is changing you. the interactions between frequencies and drugs. Think about all of the people on pharmaceuticals. There is an interaction between uh, radio frequency radiation and the drugs that you are taking. Like glaucoma medications, there were studies done that showed that people taking glaucoma medication the 
effects of the radio frequency radiation from cell phones, cell towers, uh, Wi-Fi, smart meters actually led to an increase in damage to the eye. Um, this is very serious. So, it's Yeah, scientists can do more with brain waves. Could the electrical signals coming from a phone affect certain brain waves operating in resonance with cell phone transmission frequencies? In other words, resonance, your particular brain waves in your brain, do they resonate with the frequencies coming out of your cell phone? Yeah, they do. Um, the cerebral cortex is just centimeters away from radiation broadcast from the phone's antenna. Two studies. The first one, uh, led by Rodney Croft of the Brain Science Institute, found that the cell phone was transmitting that when the cell phone was transmitting, the power of a characteristic brainwave pattern called alpha waves in the person's brain boosted significantly. Alpha waves fluctuate at a rate of 8 to 12 cycles per second. These brainwaves reflect a person's state of arousal and attention. Alpha waves are generally regarded as an indicator of reduced mental effort, cortical idling, your brain is relaxed, or your mind wandering. So think about all of the people. You can't get their attention. They can't concentrate on anything. The alpha wave is really regulating the shift of attention between external and internal inputs. Alpha waves increase in power when a person shifts his or her consciousness of the external world to internal thoughts. They also are the key brainwave signatures of sleep. Cell phone insomnia. If cell phone signals boost a person's alpha waves, does this nudge them subliminally into an altered state of consciousness or have any effect at all on the workings of their mind? that can be observed in a person's behavior. Yes, and not only could the cell phone signals alter a person's behavior during the call, the effects of the disrupted brainwave patterns continued long after the phone was switched off. So there were studies done on common phones, the phones that most people had at that particular time, it was the Nokia, uh, the 631 or 30, 6310E cell phone. All right. They did a study on 10 healthy but sleep-deprived men in their sleep research lab. They monitored the brain waves by EEG while the phone was switched on and off by remote computer and also switched between standby, listen, and talk modes of operation for 30 minute intervals on different nights. After the phone was switched to talk mode, a different brainwave pattern called delta waves remained dampened for nearly one hour after the phone was shut off. These brain waves are the most reliable and sensitive marker of stage two sleep. Approximately 50% of total sleep consists of this stage, and the subjects remained awake twice as long after the phone transmitting in talk mode was shut off. Although the test subjects had been sleep deprived the night before, they could not fall asleep for nearly one hour after the phone had been operating without their knowledge. Although this research shows the cell phone transmissions can affect a person's brain waves with persistent effects on behavior. Huh. The researcher 
said, there's no need for concern that cell phones are damaging. Wow. So they change our behavior, but there's no need for concern. Electromagnetic radiation can nevertheless have an effect on mental behavior when transmitting at the proper frequency. This researcher found uh, this fact especially remarkable when considering that everyone is surrounded by electromagnetic cluttering, clutter radiating from all kinds of electronic devices. Cell phones and talk modes seem to be particularly well-tuned to frequencies that affect brainwave activity. Results show sensitivity to low-level radiation. So what about different doses and durations and other devices? Would there be greater effects? Yes. Uh, researchers emphasize there are no health worries from these new findings. This is so inconsistent. Here the researchers are telling you there is a significant effect on uh, your brain coming from cell phones, but don't worry about it. The exciting thing about this research is that it allows us to have a look at how you might modulate brain function. And this look tells us something about how the brain works on a fundamental level. Brain scientists can now splash away with their own self-generated electromagnetic waves and learn a great deal about how brain waves respond and what they do. Well, <laughs> splashed away they did, and they know how our brain waves are working, and they are using frequencies to control our brains. Many know about this patent, nervous system man manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Wow, look at this diagram. So you sit in front of your computer monitor, but it's not just a computer monitor. It's also a uh, TV screen, cell phone screen. Yes, many computer monitors and TV tubes when displaying pulsed images, emit pulsed electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitudes to cause such excitation. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer monitor or TV set. For the latter, the image pulsing, the latter being the TV set, the image pulsing may be embedded in the program material, or it may be overlaid by modulating a video stream, either as a radio frequency signal or as a video signal. The image effectively by a uh, um, pulsed effectively by a simple computer program. For certain monitors, pulsed electromagnetic fields capable of exciting sensory resonances in nearby subjects may be generated even as the displayed images are pulsed with subliminal intensity. Why do you think the NSA wanted back doors to our computers? It wasn't just to spy on us, it was also to control our nervous system. One of the reasons why I'm including this is because I have been experiencing an awful lot of dizziness. Now, I am sitting, oh, I don't know, two and a half feet from my computer screen. And I started sitting further and further away because I began experiencing more frequent nausea, dizziness, vertigo episodes just as I sat at my computer. Now, am I saying that I'm targeted and frequencies are coming through my monitor? Am I saying that definitively? No. Am I saying that it might be the case? Yes. 
am I saying that it's just the monitor or could it be perhaps the Wi-Fi that my neighbor has or the concentration of cell phone towers the cumulative effect on me particularly is causing these symptoms it could be it could be both I don't know but I will tell you that the effects that I've been experiencing have been very concerning can I concentrate like I used to? No. Um, am I confused a lot? Yes. My vision, is it degrading rapidly? Yes. And I don't have Wi-Fi. I have an Ethernet cable. Um, I don't have a cell phone, uh, the smartphone, the iPhone, the flip top, which when I talk to people, I put the uh, the speaker on, I hold it away. So I've reduced my exposure as much as possible. I use this program, F. Lux which reduces the blue light coming from my screen which I posted a video on um, and I very rarely you know talk on the phone so it may very well be the cumulative effects of our new dangerous environment. My living in an area that is uh, the concentration is very high of cell phone towers and antennas and Gwen towers and smart meters and Wi-Fi and um, so your nervous system is I would say now that for pretty much the population of people living in regions with high concentration of cell phone towers and antennas and Gwen towers, their body now is in stress mode, chronic. They may not feel, feel it that way. They may have a lot of symptoms that they're not attributing to these frequencies but that persistent stress will lead to the body breaking down. Um, but this uh, patent alone that refers to a lot of other patents, by the way, and you can take a look at them. Um, I want to get to the effects that this patent describes that one can experience from they pulsating frequencies through your TV screens or computer monitors cell phones um, where is it? don't tell me my highlighting came off all right. Before I read the effects, let me just tell you that LCD monitors, Microsoft Windows, they can, uh, th those are the um, devices that work better for the manipulation of the nervous system and it can all be remotely controlled remotely controlled anybody having a backdoor into your computer anybody who is uh, part of your network they can just with a keyboard stroke 
uh, get your monitor, your cell phone, your TVs, well, with the computer monitors, yeah, need the network, but yes, it can all be remotely controlled. And you can't tell me that this is not being remotely controlled, but the neurological effect of exter external electric fields, those electri external electric fields, yeah, this is, this is a specific way to control somebody's nervous system through monitors and TVs, but they do do it through cell phones and cell towers and Gwen towers and Wi-Fi and smart meters. It is a direct electrical driving of the brain. Electric field is applied predominantly to the head so that electric currents are induced in the brain. Physiological effects can be induced in this manner by very weak electric fields if they are pulsed with a frequency near half hertz. Above effects include ptosis of the eyelids, which is a drooping of the eyelids. Observed, uh, other observed effects, relaxation, drowsiness, the feeling of pressure at a centered spot on the lower edge of the brow, seeing moving patterns of dark purple and greenish yellow with the eyes closed, a tonic smile, a tense feeling in the stomach, sudden loose stool, sexual excitement, depending on the precise frequency used. Yeah, it's being done, guys. Your cell phone is a weapon, a weapon. I will say that getting comments from people who are experiencing symptoms and then I read that when they turn their Wi-Fi off they might feel better. Your Wi-Fi because you're turning it off may very well not be off and that you still have Wi-Fi means you haven't even begun to reduce your exposure. You don't want to experience cumulative effects that get so bad that suddenly you have Parkinson's or suddenly you have cancer or suddenly you are facing some serious medical issue that you cannot recover from. So please reduce your exposure and please consider getting rid of your iPhone, your smartphone, getting back to the flip top or the landline would really be um, preferable. It is our consent and our use of all of these gadgets that allow ourselves to be externally controlled. And that is not a good thing. It really is not a good thing. And when I see the behavior of people around here, behaviors that are so obviously wrong, immoral. Some people I've actually called out, they do not care. They don't care what they're doing to other people. They care only about themselves. These are the kinds of behaviors that even if somebody wanted to behave that way, they restrained themselves because they knew that it was wrong and people would say something and then they would feel ashamed. Today, we have no standards. People just behave however the hell they want to behave. Okay, well, is that 
you? Has your behavior changed? And many people don't even know who they are, have no awareness of their behavior. So the subtle changes that they're experiencing, they don't have awareness of. And that leads them to be people who can be actually dangerous. So I will link below to everything. You may not see the blinking light. You may not see the blinking light. That is having an effect on your brain.